who's out. Dwayne Corona, but I still got some signs I can show ya. No class, no school. That's cool. Throw the class on the YouTube. Even if they shut the school down, I'll get that knowledge anyway, somehow. Real scholars won't stop for Corona. Tune in for that science takeover. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to Mrs. Finney's science class. Shout out, as always, to the HB Warriors, to all of our subscribers, and to all of our visitors from my house to your house. Let's learn science. Today is day one of lesson 11, and the topic for lesson 11 is genetic mutations. All right, we're starting off with section one that talks about mutations in genes. Learn an objective. I can give examples of how mutations change the function of a gene. What do you think about when you think of the word mutations? To me, I'm thinking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't know. Maybe because I'm an 80s baby. Maybe. I don't know. That's what comes to mind. But let's talk about it in our science curriculum. So here we can see there's something a little different about this cat. Do you notice? Such a cute cat. Oh, so cute. All right, so we want to take a look here. Something a little different about this hand as well as this fruit. And that is what we're going to get into in this lesson. All right, this really happens. It really happens, yes. All right. So this hand and this grapefruit have something in common. Look closely. What is unique about this hand? I'm sure you observed it. All right, it has six fingers. It may not be obvious, but what is unique about this grapefruit? What's unique about that? It is bright red. Yes, that is something unique about that grapefruit, okay? When you think of mutations, you might think of something like this monster, but both the six-fingered hand and the red grapefruit represent organisms that have had a recent mutation. Come up with a class definition for a mutation. So I want you to jot down in the comment section below. What's your own personal definition of mutation? When you think of that word, what would you define it as? Okay? We want to get a little further. So the phenomena we want to look at for lessons. 11. Some people have six fingers on one hand and some grapefruit are bright red. All right, we want to think about that as we work through this particular lesson. Think back on what you have learned. What is the relationship between genes and proteins? Okay, genes are the instructions for how to make proteins. Why does a protein structure matter? I want you to think about that. Why does it matter? Give your answer. Okay, okay. The protein structure determines its function. I know you said that. I know you said function. Like these collagen and elastin proteins in the skin, the skin's ability to stretch while remaining strong is due to the structure of the collagen and elastin. All right, so that gives a flashback that will put us on course for today's discussion. Check this out. Tiny fruit flies are buzzing all around. I don't like when fruit flies are buzzing around. To you, they are a bother, but to many scientists, they are a treasure of information about genes. These scientists use fruit flies as model organisms to better understand human genetics. From fly research, people now know about different alleles of genes and the traits they instruct for. Flies have been especially helpful in learning how different alleles first arise. All populations of individuals have variations in their genes. These variations in genes are called alleles. The original sources of these variations are mutations. 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 A mutation is any change in DNA, the genetic material of a cell. 
You can model the way a mutation changes a gene using a sentence. For example, read the following sentence. The cat ate the rat. Now, change the letter R in rat to the letter H. One small change in the sentence and it can have a completely new meaning. All right. So I would say the cat ate the hat. Similarly, a mutation in a gene can change the function of the gene. So I want to take you guys into this video. What happens when your DNA is damaged? All right. Let's see. <laughs> The DNA in just one of your cells gets damaged tens of thousands of times per day. Multiply that by your body's hundred trillion or so cells, and you've got a quintillion DNA errors every day. And because DNA provides the blueprint for the proteins your cells need to function, damage causes serious problems, such as cancer. The errors come in different forms, sometimes nucleotides. DNA's building blocks get damaged. Other times, nucleotides get matched up incorrectly, causing mutations. And nicks in one or both strands can interfere with DNA replication, or even cause sections of DNA to get mixed up. Fortunately, your cells have ways of fixing most of these problems, most of the time. These repair pathways all rely on specialized enzymes. Different ones respond to different types of damage. One common error is base mismatches. Each nucleotide contains a base, and during DNA replication, the enzyme DNA polymerase is supposed to bring in the right partner to pair with every base on each template strand, adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine. But about once every 100,000 additions, it makes a mistake. The enzyme catches most of these right away and cuts off a few nucleotides and replaces them with the correct ones. And just in case it missed a few, a second set of proteins comes behind it to check. If they find a mismatch, they cut out the incorrect nucleotide and replace it. This is called mismatch repair. Together, these two systems reduce the number of base mismatch errors to about one in one billion. But DNA can get damaged after replication, too. Lots of different molecules can cause chemical changes to nucleotides. Some of these come from environmental exposure, like certain compounds in tobacco smoke. But others are molecules that are found in cells naturally, like hydrogen peroxide. Certain chemical changes are so common that they have specific enzymes assigned to reverse the damage. But the cell also has more general repair pathways. If just one base is damaged, it can usually be fixed by a process called base excision repair. One enzyme snips out the damaged base, and other enzymes come in to trim around the site and replace the nucleotides. UV light can cause damage that's a little harder to fix. Sometimes it causes two adjacent nucleotides to stick together, distorting the DNA's double helix shape. Damage like this requires a more complex process called nucleotide excision repair. A team of proteins removes a long strand of 24 or so nucleotides and replaces them with fresh ones. Very high frequency radiation, like gamma rays and x-rays, cause a different kind of damage. They can actually sever one or both strands of the DNA backbone. Double strand breaks are the most dangerous. Even one can cause cell death. The two most common pathways for repairing double strand breaks are called homologous recombination and non-homologous end joining. Homologous recombination uses an undamaged section of similar DNA as a template. Enzymes interlace the damaged and undamaged strands, get them to exchange sequences of nucleotides, and finally fill in the missing gaps to end up with two complete double-stranded segments. Non-homologous end joining, on the other hand, doesn't rely on a template. Instead, a series of proteins trims off a few nucleotides and then fuses the broken ends back together. This process isn't as accurate. It can cause genes to get mixed up or moved around, but it's useful when sister DNA isn't available. 
Of course, changes to DNA aren't always bad. Beneficial mutations can allow a species to evolve. But most of the time, we want DNA to stay the same. Defects in DNA repair are associated with premature aging and many kinds of cancer. So if you're looking for a fountain of youth, it's already operating in your cells, billions and billions of times a day. All right, so that video provided us with some visuals for what happens. Let's talk about it a little further. All right, take a look at this picture. Once it pops up, <laughs> geneticists study fruit flies to learn about mutations. Mutations are changes in DNA. Some mutations can change the expression of proteins and lead to different traits. The red-eyed fruit fly has a normal eye color. The white-eyed fly has a mutation for eye color. See the difference? All right, so that is considered normal in the fruit fly. And this right here is considered a mutation in a fruit fly. Okay, let's go down here. Remember that many genes are the instructions for making a protein. A mutation might cause the organism to make a protein with a different structure, which could change the way the protein functions and thus change a trait. For example, fruit flies normally have red eyes, but when one mutation in one gene, they can have white eyes. The mutation results in the change of a membrane protein structure. With a different structure, the membrane protein no longer allows the substances to make the red pigment to enter the cells of the eye. However, permanent mutations that affect traits are rare. This is true for a few reasons. First of all, many mutations are repaired by the cell. The cell has machinery that can help find mistakes in the DNA. Secondly, not all mutations happen in a gene. Some parts of DNA are not genes, so a mutation might not affect any traits. Finally, the change to a protein that results from a gene mutation might be too small to affect the way the protein functions. Here it says mutations can occur when a cell is preparing to divide. Remember that all cells come from a pre-existing parent cell that divided into two cells. Multicellular organisms grow and replace worn out cells by cell division. Unicellular organisms reproduce by cell division. Before a cell begins to divide, it copies all its DNA. Copying DNA is a complex process and mistakes often occur. Cells have ways of fixing mistakes. But if a mistake fails to be corrected, it becomes a permanent mutation. Figure 11.1 illustrate what happens when a mutation is not corrected in a cell. You can see that the mutation is then passed on to every cell that divides from the originally mutated cell. Let's take a look here. I'll bring this up. Okay. So here you have from cell division right there's a division happening split into two mutation occurred in this cell all right and you can see right there it's a green spot more two and then once it divides that mutation is passed on through the division okay and then over here you have the uv radiation from the sun okay that also is creating mutation all right oh Let's go back. So there are two mutations result either from mistakes that are made when DNA is copied or from environmental mutagens. Certain chemicals and types of radiation are examples of mutagens. All right. Mutations also result when cells are exposed to mutagens. A mutagen is anything in the environment that causes a change in DNA. A virus can be a mutagen. Certain chemicals found in car exhaust and in soot from burning coal are mutagens. Ultraviolet UV radiation from the sun 
x-rays from medical devices and radiation from radioactive materials also are mutagens. The enlarged fruit shown in the image resulted from radiation that was released into the air from a nuclear power plant accident. This radiation damaged DNA in the parts of the quince plant that produce fruit. In this case, the mutations resulted in a larger and more oddly shaped quince fruit. Check this out. See? So this is an example of mutation as well. Check this out. One pot potential result of exposure to mutagens is cancer. Most kinds of cancer result from mutations. Cancer is a group of diseases in which cells divide uncontrollably. In many of these cases, the mutations result from exposure to a mutagen in the environment. For example, chemical mutagens in tobacco and in cigarette smoke can cause lung cancer. When you put on sunscreen, you protect your skin cells from exposure to UV radiation, which can cause mutations. Certain mutations in skin cells can lead to skin cancers. All right, let's go to our check for understanding here. We want to look at drag and drop the true statements onto the image of DNA. See what you got from what we covered. All right, first section, lesson 11. True, we're dragging. False, we're leaving. First statement, mutations can occur when a cell is preparing to divide. Do you want to drag and drop or leave it? What do you think? You want to go with that one. Okay. Cancer is a group of diseases in which cells grow too large and die. No, leave it. Most mutations permanently affect the body. You want to leave that one too? Let's keep in mind, how many do we have left? We have one left, all right. A mutagen is anything in the environment that helps repair changes in DNA. Mutations are the original source of gene variation. You have to pick something here. What do you think? What do you think? You want to go with the last one? Are you sure? What about the set? What about the third one? What about the? Oh, um, all right. Well, maybe I'll try the last one. We'll see. Check and answer. You got it. All right. Mutations can occur when a cell is preparing to divide. Mutations are the original source of gene variation. All right, let's check for our questions at the bottom. What is the difference between a mutation and a mutagen? Hmm, what do you think, what do you think? You should be able to explain this at this point. Answer, make sure you jot it down. A mutation is a change in the DNA of a cell, okay, but a mutagen is something in the environment that can cause the mutation to occur. All right, jot this down so you have this information. All right, number two, how can a mutation in a gene change an organism's traits? How can a mutation in a gene change an organism's traits? Hmm, what'd you say? Thinking about it? Okay. All right, here we go. It says, if a mutation occurs in the DNA in a gene, the mutation might change the structure and or function 
of the protein that the gene is, instructed, is instructing the cell to make. Since an organism's cells and body parts are largely made up of proteins, a change in a protein structure and our function can change an organism's traits. So keep that in mind. Okay. Let's take a look at three. Explain the connection between cancer and mutations. The connection between cancer and mutations. Mutations that affect the regulation of how many times a cell divides can result in cancer. Okay, so keep in mind in cancer, it's dividing what? Uncontrollably. Yep. All right. Number four, this image represents two ways someone can get a mutation in one or more of their cells. Explain what is occurring in each of these images. In your own words, what's happening if someone receives mutation from cell division? And what happens if someone receives mutation from mutagens? All right, so in your own words, you should be able to explain. This is our final question for this section. The left side of the illustration shows how cells can get mutations when they are copying their DNA during what? Cell division. These mutations can also be passed on to other cells when the mutated cell divides. The right side of the illustration shows how cells can get mutations from exposure to mutagens like UV rays from the sun. All right. So in your own words, make sure you explain the difference between the two illustrations. All right. And that wraps up section one of lesson 11. We want to close out here. Make sure we tackle our essential question. How are fruit flies used to help understand human genetics? From fly research, people now know about different alleles of genes and the traits they instruct for. All right, we are closing out with this section. Yes, yes, yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. It's been fun. It's been real. We break it down and pick up science skills. Give yourself two claps just for tuning in. Come back to me tomorrow. We can learn again. Oh, it's been fun. It's been real. We break it down and pick up science skills. Give yourself two claps just for tuning in. Come back to me tomorrow. We can learn again. I will see you tomorrow. Have an outstanding rest of your day.